Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Esther and this channel is all about helping you to succeed on your nursing entrance exams. So today we're going to be starting a new series specifically focusing on different areas of the HESI A2 exam. We're going to be looking at the math section today and talking about units of measurement and doing conversions where you convert from one unit of measurement into another. So for example, if you're asked how many feet are in a thousand inches, then you today will know how to do that conversion and to do it very quickly and very easily. So we are going to talk all about different units of measurement that are important to know for the HESI A2 exam. And then we're going to talk about important conversions that you should memorize. And then we will finish by talking through a couple practice problems together so that you can feel very confident and so that you can get a great score on your HESI A2 math section. So let's just dive right in. So here I have a list of some of the important measurements that you need to know, as well as the conversions. You'll see I have the standard or English measurement units in kind of this purplish color, and then I have the metric units in green so that you can see the difference there. And then I have the important conversions um, between them in blue so you can see those as well. When we're measuring length, in standard measurements we have inches, we have feet, and we have the mile. In the metric system, there's um, centimeter, meter, and kilometer. Now when you're converting from the standard into the metric, here are some really important conversions that you'll want to memorize. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. 3.28 feet is equal to one meter. One mile is equal to 1.61 kilometers. So you can take any of these conversions to use and you can also flip them. They'll still be true the opposite direction. So if you say one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters, you can also say 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. Doesn't matter which direction you say it, it's true both directions. Now let's move on to the volume units. So in the standard measurements, we have quart and gallon. In the metric system, we have the liter. So 1.06 quarts is equal to one liter. One gallon is equal to 3.79 liters. Then moving on to measurements of weight, we have ounces in the standard system and grams in the metric system. We have pounds in the standard system and kilograms in the metric system. So one ounce is equal to 28.3 grams and 2.2 pounds is equal to one kilogram. So these are some of the most important conversions for you to memorize between the standard system and the metric system. Now when we move on, here are some other really important conversions to memorize that are specifically within the standard system. So 12 inches is equal to one foot. That one's a pretty common one, you may already know that one. Three feet is equal to one yard and 5,280 feet are equal to one mile. Now moving on to volume, most of these, as you can see, are converting within the standard system with the exception of a couple that are between standard and metric. So three teaspoons is equal to one tablespoon. Two cups is equal to one pint. Two pints is equal to one quart. Four quarts is equal to one gallon. Um, here is between standard to metric system. So one teaspoon is equal to five milliliters and one fluid ounce is equal to 30 milliliters. Now it's important to note here that fluid ounces, I'm just gonna mark this, fluid ounces are different from ounces when you're measuring weight. These are two different types of measurement. But the fluid ounce, as I just said, one fluid ounce is equal to 30 milliliters. And then eight fluid ounces is equal to one cup. So moving on then to our important weight conversions. 16 ounces is equal to one pound and 2,000 pounds is equal to one ton. Now before we move on, I do want to talk about one more thing in terms of metric uh, measurements. Now there are very often with metric measurements, there are often prefixes that you're going to see, and these prefixes are important to know. So I'll walk through these really quickly over here. I'm gonna choose a different color and we'll just walk through them together. So 
I'll choose like this little um, sparkly pen to make it a little bit more fun. All right. So we've got Giga. Giga means one billion. And a prefix, um, if you're not familiar with that term, that means it comes before the root word. So like, for example, you there could be um, a, a gigawatt, and that would be one billion watts. All right, the next prefix is mega. Mega means one million. Kilo. This is one that you'll probably more commonly see on the Hessier 2 exam, although you could see the others as well. But a kilo is very common to see, and this means 1,000. So, for example, you may see a kilogram or a kilometer. All of that means 1,000. So, if it's a kilometer, it would be 1,000 meters. If it's a kilogram, it would be 1,000 grams. Desa means one tenth so it does not mean 10 it means one tenth a fraction for example if you see decimeter that would mean one tenth of a meter centi means one hundredth milli means one thousandth for example, like milliliter would mean one thousandth of a liter. And then micro means one millionth. So like a microgram, which means one millionth of a gram. So if you know these important prefixes, so these would be in the metric system, metric prefixes. If you know and memorize these, these will also give you very important conversion factors when you're working with conversions. All right, so let's look at a couple practice problems now. So the first conversion that we're going to do is 80 ounces to pounds. So first we should ask ourselves, are we converting from standard system to metric system? The answer here is no, because ounces and pounds are both standard system measurements. So now we want to think about what is the conversion unit that we know that we can use to convert this problem. Um, and it's important to remember here, when we're working with conversions, we are not wanting to change the 80 ounces in terms of value. We want to find what is the same value, but just change the name or the unit of measurement to pounds. So the way that we'll do that is by using one of our conversion factors. So let's look up here. You see here where it's highlighted, um, this one, 16 ounces equals one pound is the conversion unit that we're going to be using, the equivalent um, measurement that we'll use. So what we do is we create a fraction and we multiply this by that fraction. So we're going to put one pound on the top. That's what we're wanting to convert it to. And then 16 ounces on the bottom. And we cross multiply. So we take, we can cross out the ounces on both sides. Those cancel each other out. And we're gonna do 80 times one, which equals 80. Then we're gonna take on the bottom um, is just 16. So we put 16 on the bottom. So now we have 80 over 16. We need to divide that. So at this point you could use your calculator or if you're very, very adept at math. You can do it in your head. Um, so if you put that into your calculator, 80 divided by 16 is equal to 5. And then we use this unit right here, pound. So we say 5 pounds. And so there we have it. 80 ounces is the same as 5 pounds. And that's how you work through that problem. Let's take a look at one more. Now here we want to convert from 13.2 pounds into grams. So pounds is a standard measurement and grams is a metric measurement. So we're wanting to convert from standard to metric. And for this one, we actually need two different equivalents in order to get from pounds to grams. So first, we're going to use, 
let's look up here again at our conversion uh, equivalents. So we know up here that 2.2 pounds is equal to one kilogram. So that's what we're first going to start with. 2.2 pounds is equal to one kilogram. So let's put that here. 2.2 pounds, we wanna put it opposite of the other pounds so the pounds will cancel out. 2.2 pounds equals one kilogram. All right, so this is the first unit of measurement. Our pounds will cancel out here and you, if you were to only use just this one um, equivalent, you would end up with getting an answer with kilograms, which is not what we were asked for in the question. So we are asked to convert to grams. So now we're going to need one more conversion factor to get from kilograms to grams. Now, if you remember, when we talked about the metric prefixes, what does kilo mean? Kilo means 1,000. Kilogram means 1,000 grams. So 1,000 grams is equal to one kilogram. And so you see here these two, they will cancel each other out because you have one kilogram and one kilogram. So those cancel out and now we can multiply 13.2 by 1000. So that's going to be um, 13,200 on the top and then 2.2 times one, so two, we end up with 2.2 on the bottom. And then we are going to um, put this into our calculator again, and we are going to divide. So 13,200 divided by 2.2, which equals six thousand. And you see the unit that we're left with here is grams. So 13.2 pounds is the same as 16, sorry, 6,000 grams. So I hope that's helpful for you to go through all of these units. What I'll do is below, I'll just have a quick cheat sheet exactly of what I have written out here today for you that you can download and look at and study so that you can easily uh, memorize all of these different units and you can also memorize the conversions from the standard into the metric system as well as just the conversions within the standard system and within the metric system. And also to memorize those metric prefixes which can be extremely helpful when you get these kinds of problems on the Hessier 2 math section. So I do want to recommend to you a wonderful practice program that can help get you prepared for the Hessier 2 exam extremely thoroughly and also quite quickly. Mometrics University has just excellent courses Today in this video, I actually used a couple of their practice problems with their permission, and they have tons and tons of resources to get ready for the Hessier 2 exam, the mathematics section specifically, but then also all the other sections. They have flashcards, they have lessons, they have videos, they have practice problems, and then what I like best of all is that they have several full-length practice tests that are like what you're going to see on test day. And so if you go through their entire course, you will be more than prepared to take the HESA-2 exam. So I'm going to link the Mometrics Online University down below so you can see that there if you're interested. And I hope this was helpful to you. I'm going to be doing a whole series on preparing for the math section of the HESA-2. So definitely subscribe to this channel to be on the lookout for more of those videos coming soon.